Next, let's take a look at the Analysis tab. You'll notice that we have quite a few different selected measurement objects that we can choose from. Up to four spots, four areas, four differences, a reference temperature, and an isotherm. Let's create an area. I click on Area 1, click Active, define the X and Y pixel coordinates for the top left of the box that I'm going to create, and the corresponding width and height. Then I just click Apply. We see a box show up and it also marks the hottest temperature within that box. We also get some nice statistical tools such as maximum temperature, minimum, and average temperature. You'll also notice that for the image we have a distance of 1 meter, 20 degrees Celsius for temperature reflected, and emissivity of 0.95. If our region of interest has an object in there with a different emissivity, we click on Use Local Parameters, and change the emissivity. Let's change it to 0.5. Right now we see the average temperature in the box is 39.6. When I hit apply, we notice the temperature jumps up significantly to 54 degrees Celsius. This is due to the local parameters emissivity of 0.5. If I uncheck it, click apply again, everything returns to normal. Another really neat tool to use is the isotherm tool. This allows me to color a region of temperature that's either above, below, or within an interval that I define. Right now we see that the maximum temperature of the box is about 57 degrees Celsius. Let's color anything above 52 degrees Celsius in red. I have a few other color options too, which are green, blue, yellow, and a couple other palettes available. I like red because it stands out really well against this color palette. I click apply and now everything that's above 52 degrees Celsius gets colored red. This is really useful if you're looking at a scene that's uh, ambient temperature and as soon as something hot comes into the field of view you really want it to stand out above everything else in the background. It also is nice if there's critical monitor vessel monitoring where anything above a given temperature threshold should be colored because it triggers a visual alarm for the user. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the isotherm and let's take a look at how our analysis tools can generate alarms. We can use up to eight different alarms and they can be used for measurement tools, digital inputs, or temperature sensors. In this case I'm going to base it off of a measurement tool. I'm going to choose the active, and since we have the area box open, let's choose area 1. Let's choose our alarm type to be anything above, again, 52 degrees Celsius. And to just make sure that it's not something that happens to flash in the field of view, we can specify a threshold time of how many seconds it has to be above that threshold before it triggers the alarm. Two seconds is definitely enough for us. And we can have it flash, beep, or do other neat features such as email the image to us, or put it on an FTP site, or maybe even store it to the actual camera itself. In this case, I just want it to flash, and let's go ahead and have it uh, beep as well. Let's hit apply and then wait a few seconds and our alarm should trigger. One mistake that I made, and this is good to look at, is that I was looking at the average of the temperature. You'll notice the average is about 38 degrees Celsius. In this case, we want to look at the maximum. So I make the adjustment, click apply, we should hear the alarm go off here in just a second. That's the alarm. We have the flashing and of course the noise. If I click on the image, it disables the alarm, but it's going to trigger again here in just a second. So let's go ahead and turn the alarm off. You'll notice when the alarm is going, we did have an alarm event log right there that we could view as well. And that's alarms. It's pretty straightforward and easy to use.